Before we talk about the time complexity of our next algorithm, let's briefly review a mathematical principle, namely the concept of a dominant term in an expression. Suppose we have an algorithm which is working on a data structure of size n. We might find that it takes 5 times n to the power 3 plus n to the power 2 plus 4n plus 3 steps. As n gets bigger, the smaller terms become less and less significant. The term 5n to the power 3 grows so quickly that the other terms just don't matter. They get swallowed up. So we can ignore everything after 5n cubed. In fact, we can also ignore any constants. So the big O time complexity of this algorithm is O n cubed. We call this cubic complexity. So now, let's consider the bubble sort. This is probably the first sorting algorithm you ever learned about, because it's relatively simple to understand and easy to implement. The bubble sort is the stairway to heaven of sorting algorithms. The bubble sort sorts a list of items into numeric or alphabetical order. It scans a list, comparing pairs of values and swapping their positions if necessary. For n items of data, the list has to be scanned like this n minus 1 times. There's all kinds of enhancements you can make to the bubble sort to improve its performance, but let's talk about the basic algorithm first. The pseudocode for a bubble sort involves a loop to scan the array, comparing pairs of items and swapping them if necessary. If there are five items to sort, that is, if n equals five, then there's four pairs of items to be compared. So this loop only needs to run four times. Since the array is probably zero based, this loop counts from zero to n minus two. There's no detail here about how the swap takes place, but this is usually implemented with a temporary variable. Then there's an outer loop to ensure that this scan runs n minus one times. This is what it looks like. We compare a pair of values and swap them if necessary. We have five values here, so we're going to scan through the list four times. Eventually, all of the data will be in order. Now let's double the amount of data it has to work with. And notice that if we want to sort these into ascending order, the data is in completely the wrong order. Just as before, Pairs of values are compared and swapped if necessary. Notice that the larger values are making their way to the end of the list, rather like the ripples on the surface of a pond when you throw a pebble into it. That's why this is called a ripple sort. It's quite clear that even if we speed up this animation, it's taking more than twice as long with twice as much data. In fact, you can imagine if we double the amount of data again, it's going to take an awful lot longer. When we plot the amount of data versus the time on a chart, you can see that the curve is growing very, very quickly. Doubling the amount of data actually quadruples the time taken. If we triple the amount of data, we increase the time taken by a factor of nine. So describing this in terms of complexity, for n items of data, a simple implementation of the bubble sort takes n minus one multiplied by n minus one operations. If we expand these brackets out, it can be written n squared minus 2n plus 1. And you can see the dominant term is n squared. This is known as quadratic complexity. And in big O notation, we write O and in brackets n squared. So this chart actually describes quadratic time complexity. We can enhance the bubble sort. You'll have noticed that after the first pass of the inner loop, the largest value finds itself in the correct place. After the second pass, the second largest value is in the correct place, and so on. 
Now this means that the inner loop can run one less time with each pass of the outer loop. In terms of pseudocode, we can make a very simple adjustment to the program to achieve this. So what's the impact on the complexity? Well, for n items of data, the enhanced bubble sort algorithm performs n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 all the way down to 3, 2 and 1 operations. Now without going into the mathematics, this can be shown to be n squared minus n divided by 2. And this gives us a 50% reduction in the time taken. But the dominant term is still n squared. So even our enhanced bubble sort still has quadratic complexity. Remember, complexity is describing the way that the time taken grows according to the amount of data. There's another enhancement we can make as well. If the inner loop doesn't perform any swaps, then the data must now be in the correct order. So we can check for swaps with a Boolean variable, and we can force an exit from the bubble sort when there's no more work to do. This is what the pseudocode looks like. And this introduces another concept, that of best and worst case scenario. With our bubble sort, if the data is already in the right order, the inner loop will run only once. So in the best case scenario, the bubble sort actually has linear complexity. In the worst case scenario with the bubble sort, the data is in completely the wrong order, so everything has to be moved. In the worst case scenario, the bubble sort has quadratic complexity. With Big O, it's normally the worst case scenario that we're interested in. 